It's been 30 days since we set up our isopod terrarium, and now you will see what happened during that time. On the first day of the isopod settlement in these unusual conditions, we decided to give them a little bonus in the form of a piece of a carrot. So they recover from the stress and begin to eat and grow in the terrarium. Thanks to this lure, we can quietly take beautiful pictures and enjoy the unusual appearance and shape of these creatures. Look at their eyes, which are composed of dozens of small eyes. Under magnification, they look like huge mutants, but in fact, they are very kind. Look, they even share their food with an ant and don't chase it away. During the whole day, they all come to eat one by one, so by the evening, the carrot was all gone. We put in our terrarium on the isopods, but over time it got inhabited by other creatures. Personally, I was shocked when one day I saw several of these flying mosquitoes inside of the terrarium. Although they are very minuscule, three times less than the average mosquito. They probably got inside as an egg or larvae, and at the high room temperature they hatched rather quickly and began to look for someone to bite. But that's not all the mysteries of the terrarium. Its glass used to be covered with such condensation, and every morning we found it patterned with these winding paths. I suppose can't walk on glass, and neither can mosquitoes, so what could it be? I still have no idea, but hopefully in the future we will find out the answer. About a week later, the terrarium flora became enriched with new plants, seeds of which were probably brought there with the forest soil. According to natural cycles, they should be dormant right now, but since it's quite warm at home, they probably thought it's spring already and began to sprout. At one point, I saw a weird isopod sitting on the side of a stump and beating everyone who got close to him. Yes, it was just sharply hitting them with its antennae. Although I think that the kicks were not really strong, because its opponents had no reaction and probably even laughed, thinking it was a tickle. In the end, our fighter tickled the enemy so much, so he walked away laughing. But as it turned out, all this was happening for a reason. In 10 minutes, I saw a terrible picture as the body of this isopod was torn in two by something coming out of the inside. I thought it was some kind of a mutant. But then I realized that we were lucky to observe the molting process. This is the shedding of the outer shell of the isopod. But the shell, when removed for some reason, turned out to be completely white. Maybe because of the abundance of calcium. First, the isopod sheds its back part and then the front part. The whole process was observed by the isopod chased away by our molting hero. There is an explanation for it too. After the molting, that guy quickly began to eat the cast shell of its mate. After all, it is an extremely valuable and nutritious material for building the shell full of calcium. To get this amount of calcium from plants, the isotop would have needed several weeks of plant eating, while here it's all at once. On the back of the wall of the terrarium, I noticed many tunnels. Immediately saw who was responsible for them. This caterpillar with many legs and an armored shell with small prickles. Usually, caterpillars live on the surface. I've never seen those crawling underground. Next to the caterpillar, there was a huge worm. From afar, it seemed dead, but looking closer under magnification, we saw it was alive. And just look at what we managed to capture. The worm's shell is transparent, and inside it has some liquid with something that looks like another worm floating in it. Moreover, its shell can move independently on the body. It creeped me out, having reminded me of a footage from a movie about aliens. Also, sometimes I met this strange spider with two eyes and a sharp spout. 
what he eats and whether he can find food for himself here is still a mystery to me. But not everything in the terrarium was as good as it might seem at the first glance. This plant with petals started getting yellow, as well as the other one. They probably don't like transplanting, or this environment is just unsuitable for them. It is a pity, because isopods love to rest on these leaves. By the way, they seem to be very social animals, who like to just sit next to each other, or even on top of each other. Probably talking about something, like these guys. An important part of their communication is also touching each other's antennae. Now it looks like they quarreled suddenly, and one isopod climbs down and begins to gnaw on the trunks of the tree his friends are sitting on. What an interesting relationship they have, just like humans. This could also be the reason why the plant feels so bad. A couple of days later, I happened to notice some movement on the surface of the earth. I saw a creature I have never seen before. It was this little thing standing there, moving its very long tentacles and tendrils in sync. What do you think it is, and what does it do there for? Maybe to lure its prey? After all, there must be some purpose and function to such movements. After all, animals' actions are always reasonable. After a while, our plantain has noticeably grown and put out a few new leaves. This is a good sign, meaning it likes this place. The same happens to the wild strawberry. Perhaps soon we'll see flowers, and then maybe even berries. But towards the end of the month, things started to get worse. As it turned out, isopods prefer eating certain kinds of mosses growing in the terrarium. Ignoring the others, look for example at the amount of the moss at the beginning of the video and now. We have to undertake something, otherwise it can lead to the isopods dying of starvation. But there is more. The middle part of the moss began to be covered with mold, which spores we probably put inside when making our terrarium. It turned out much more complicated than I expected, but leaving the terrarium in this condition would be wrong. We'll get to fixing everything immediately. Watch the next episode to see the result of our work. Subscribe so you don't miss anything.